All right, Brent Porcy with topvelocity.net. 3x pitch biometrics of Al Hannon Miller. Um, this is one of our you know, best testimonials at Top Velocity. He came in about 22, 23 years old and camp and was 80 miles an hour. And then four months later, we're here at 91. We have video also online of him at 93, which wasn't much longer after this. And then he wound up going into his first independent professional season and hitting 94. Also had a great year, a lot of strikeouts. I think he had 75 plus strikeouts. Um, so, you know, great testimony. Now, <clears throat> what really changed, you know, if we look at his athletic measurements, his mobility, his performance measurements when he first came in, you're going to see a big change there. But here we're going to be looking at the biomechanics. But some of the big things that changed athletically was mainly with him. He was a strong guy. He did gain strength, but more importantly, he, he gained power. He converted a lot of it to power. His vertical jump went from 30 inches to 37 inches, and he's 6'4", about 235 at the end. So <clears throat> he can move a big mass really powerfully down the mound, and that's one thing he truly made uh, improvements on and worked his tail off to do. Um, also, too, you know, speed, motor control, some other big things. He really worked hard with the sled work to get a lot of that power moving lateral better. A lot of the uh, med ball throws really started to master the med ball throws and really put it all together well. And that's what you saw. This guy is an extremely hard worker. Um, this is not something that just happens um, just through following some training protocol. It's really... Uh, working using that protocol that we've established to reach the goals of an elite uh, pitcher that we've set in the program. That's the key. But let's see what by mechanically has improved. <clears throat> We're definitely going to see more power, but let's see if anything else has changed. So we're at 240 frames per second, 144 frames of front foot strike. We're going, uh, everything's in inches, speed is inches per frame. Distance from origin, the back foot and the rubber is the origin, so every joint's being measured from that origin. X positions just the horizontal and Y is the vertical. So we're going to be going eight frames per click. We're going to start off at 48 frames, look at the initial movement, and we'll just follow the hip. Now we can see at 91 here, he's 16 inches from the rubber to 14. So he's, you know, two inches ahead. So he's definitely moving more aggressive. He's 35 inches from the ground to 34. You know, it's 34 and a half. So pretty much the same there in flexion. Um, if we look at the front view, the origin is in the middle of the back foot. So anything in the X position to the left is negative. Anything to the right is positive. If we do the same thing, let's go to that 48 frames, <clears throat> 48 frames. Okay. We can see the hips are more counter-rotated. Um, so hips here are more, a little bit more square to the target, uh, more counter-rotated here. Specifically, when we go to these 96 frames, this is usually right before the leg drive, we can see front leg is starting to cross the back leg. So opening earlier here, front leg is still closed across the body. So he's delaying rotation, getting more counter-rotation. Uh, at the same time, too, he's building more energy. So if we look at 96 frames here, to 96 frames here, we see 25 inches, so he's still two inches ahead, uh, and now he's moving down more, so more forward movement, more downward movement at this point, okay, so we're, we're really starting to see uh, the that power that he developed paying off, but at the same time, too, he counter-rotates more to delay and, and give him more time to build that power down the mount, so... That's the thing. A lot of guys can make these power gains and not see it on the mound because they're still flying open and they're still not implementing it in their lower half uh, as well. And you see Al doing that. Okay, the Arm positions look to be the same. Now this is going to be key here. We're going to watch the speeds of the back knee coming off the rubber and let's see where they peak and how high they peak. So you see he's at a .3. Okay. And you know, never gets to a four, or actually, wrong. Right at front foot strike gets to a four. So I'm trying to find where it peaks before front foot strike. So you can see it's really not a peak when he was at 80. Just kind of drifting, more falling probably. So we'll probably just have to say right before front foot strike. 
and you know it's the foot is already off the rubber at that point so it's really just gravity so there's really not a peak of energy uh, at 80 let's see if he establishes that peak of energy well, he's already at a four here he's up to a five so we definitely see a more definitely more peak and then we see the deceleration okay so we're actually seeing a drive now so he hit a five here you know still you're moving a big guy 235 pounds so we're not seeing the peaks so no peaks here at 80 we see a peak and then decel out of the peak uh, into front foot strike now ideally you still could even time that later uh, but you're not actually seeing force coming off the rubber which you weren't seeing uh, at 80 miles an hour okay so when he hits front foot strike I mean look at the stride lengths We take both of them to front foot strike. So the stride lengths are 78 inches, 96 inches to 83. So 13 more inches of stride length. Um, a lot more energy in it too as well. If you would have seen that increase with loss of energy, you wouldn't have converted to ball speed. So more stride length, more peak of energy, into front foot strike and if we look at the hip position at this point 25 inches from the ground to 30 so he's five inches lower in his center of mass um, <clears throat> chin positions look very much the same uh, looks like a, definitely a more open hip position front foot strike but we can get a better indication of that in the front and here at front foot strike So he's here in front foot strike. Let's take him here in the 80 mile an hour pitch to front foot strike. Okay. And we see as far as shoulder orientation, left shoulder is a minus seven, right shoulder is a minus seven. So he's pretty much perfectly squared at the target here. It's a minus one here and a uh, zero. So actually slightly more closed here, but interesting that um, Let's see, it's it's more on the, the midline position. So he definitely went more across his body too, and that was him being counter-rotated. So front foot position was at, um, actually they, um, here at 80 was on the line, zero. We want to actually be close, so he's open. And then here at 91, it's at a minus 14. So his front foot is now 14 inches more closed off than it was here. So sig significant for him to land more close and stay more counter-rotated counter as he built all that power because that allowed him to really uh, use it and not allow it just to fly open and cause the system to fire off early. Okay, so, and then the as far as the back hip, looks like it's a minus, it says minus 14 to the shoulders, minus seven, looks about seven inches left to right of separation. And here it's you know, a minus eight to six, only two. So considerably more hip to shoulder separation um, as well uh, the arm positions look the same the trunk position actually looks the same very vertical and then as he goes to maximum external rotation he's got about 11 degrees of tilt as he goes to maximum external rotation let's see what he has here and this is something he could definitely improve on he's at about 10 so about the same okay a little bit more looks like sh shoulder abduction, which is good for his arm. Um, but this is where he could work to get more contralateral tilt, which would delay and allow him to build energy longer as well. So if we watch front leg stability at this point, now think about it. We, we have more energy coming out of the back leg. We have a longer stride. We saw momentum starting earlier. We saw lower center of mass. So he definitely has more energy hitting front foot. Let's see how well he stabilizes it. So as we go forward, it holds at 78, or actually drifts, not holds. So it drifts 79, 80, 81, so that's three inches, and then it stabilizes, and it comes back one. So drifted three comes back one, okay? Let's see what he does here at 80. It's 71, two, three, almost four it almost drifted four inches and came back one so he actually stabilized better with potentially more energy so that's a huge piece for al that was the one thing with al 
having a lot of strength but not the power component he had a hard time stabilizing his front leg so we increased energy to his front leg and then he stabilized it just a little bit better which is impressive from there you know the big determining factor in a lot of velocity is this trunk we can see it's 54 inches from the rubber here to 61 and if we compare that to the front toe or the stride length 96 that's um, that's 15 or 25 inches and then here it's uh, 83 so it's a little bit farther from the tart well, actually no that's 3363 yeah it's a little bit farther from the front foot in X position so it, it's a little bit ahead here which more energy and that's typically what happens everything wants to go off early so if, if Al can delay this better that's just going to be a bigger increase which more than likely is what happened as he went to 94 <clears throat> so but still pretty similar maybe three four two three inches ahead but lower center of gravity here arm cocking same place we do see more flexion here in this arm than we see here um, that's just more than likely because more energy going forward that that arms trying to stay uh, locked into that trunk so let's watch front foot strike the trunks going 0.82 inches per frame and here at 80 it's going 0.62 so considerably faster already the trunk is moving and then let's watch from 61 inches how far it goes we see it staying at eight seven six five and it holds at a five which is pretty impressive and it went 61 to 83 so that's 22 inches that's very impressive here he's at a 62 at 54 we see it's six holding there pretty good and then goes to a five Okay, and just hits a four at the end. So definitely faster trunk over here. Then we went 54 to 74. That's 20 inches. So we saw it go uh, two inches farther and considerably faster uh, with the higher speed. Okay. From here, we can just look at the arm speeds to see if we had much of an increase there. We watch the shoulder speeds. It's a 1.4, shoulder speed's here, definitely faster, it's a 1.5, elbow speed's hit a 3, elbow speed's here hit a 2.3, and then the wrist speed's hit a 3.7. Speeds hit. Jeez, some of the highest arm speeds I've ever seen hit a 4.9. Okay, so once again, we are trying to prove that it wasn't just explosiveness. So the only component we saw that wasn't correlated to explosiveness was his landing more close and staying more counter rotating. Uh, that was the key biomechanical change, which allowed him to use more of the explosive power that he was creating. So as much as it wasn't due to the explosiveness that he had gained through the training, um, it was there to allow him to get more out of all that explosive energy. So at the end of the day, this is really, really what takes someone, uh, you know, significantly from 80 to 94 you know, in a 14, 15 mile an hour gain is going to be a lot in the power of the movement, specifically because we're looking at a measurement of power pitching, which is velocity. Um, and then the ability to harness more of that power. And that's definitely what we learned here with the Al Hennon Miller, Miller testimony.